These disturbing secret messages asking for help were allegedly found inside packages. This is literally sick. So these clothes came in from Sheen and multiple tags say, need your help. While some of them turned out to be translation or printing mistakes, it's still making people worried. My girlfriend had actually decided to buy some of Shein products for the first time, not because we wanted to see if we would get any hidden messages, but rather because it's just so cheap. Less than 20 bucks for a pair of Mary Jane heels? Just look at the price difference that Shein has in comparison to other brands. And the quality is not that bad either. If you ever heard of or bought anything from this popular brand, do not look away from this video. Because, well, how come millions of people are addicted to buying things from Shein when there are so many negative things surrounding this clothing brand? Brace yourself as we reveal how Shein manages to keep prices so low and the things that Shein doesn't want us to know about. Fast fashion giant Shein once again facing serious allegations. But now a new lawsuit filed in California federal court is accusing the retailer of such aggressive copyright infringement that it violates the RICO Act. These companies are not also the obvious labor issues there with forced labor uh, and American companies are at a serious disadvantage at this point. It is not the five dollar jeans that have lawmakers looking into two of the fastest growing retailers in the world, but instead their ties to the Chinese government. Just in case you were wondering, this pie chart over here shows the market share of fast fashion retailers in the US. 17% of the chart is Zara, 27% is claimed by H&M, and 40% is from Shein. So how did a company that originates from a country that is a rival to the US in economy end up gaining such a large portion of the pie in the fast fashion industry? Enter Chris Su, a Chinese entrepreneur born in Shandong, China, and the founder of Zico, which later on changed its name to Xianside. Hope I didn't butcher any of those names, which was later ultimately rebranded as Xian in 2015. Initially, the company sold wedding dresses and women's fashion items. However, with Su's expertise in search engine optimization and marketing, he recognized the potential of e-commerce in the burgeoning internet landscape. He decided to venture deeply into the fashion industry by sourcing products from China and targeting international markets, primarily the United States and Europe, while operating as an online retailer. This strategy allowed Xi'an to offer trendy clothing at significantly lower prices compared to traditional retailers, since the Chinese yuan has a significant lower currency strength compared to the US dollar. In the early years, Xi'an leveraged Su's SEO expertise to optimize its online presence and attract a global customer base. The company also invested in social media marketing and influencer collaborations, which play a crucial role in building brand awareness. By offering a wide variety of fashion-forward clothing and accessories, Xi'an quickly gained popularity among young, fashion-conscious consumers looking for affordable options, primarily the Gen Zs. Though many of us are outside of the demographics, such as myself, or not interested in fast fashion, such as myself too, I think this topic is still relevant, interesting, and even concerning to some degree of controversies, especially when its valuation still holds at $45 billion in 2024 after a steep drop from its original $66 billion due to investigations and stalling of its IPO. After the rebranding to Xi'an, aiming for a more streamlined and recognizable brand name, there was a significant shift in the company's strategy as it moved towards the fast fashion business model. Xi'an began to focus on producing and delivering new styles at an unprecedented pace, often imitating the latest trends seen on runways and social media. Xi'an's business model revolves around rapid design, production, and distribution cycles. Unlike traditional fashion retailers, which typically release seasonal collections, Xi'an updates its inventory with up to 1,000 new items daily. This approach is made possible through a highly efficient supply chain and close partnerships with manufacturers, 
predominantly based in China. By the late 2010s, Xi'an had established itself as a major player in the global fashion market. The company expanded its operations to include warehouses and distribution centers in several countries, improving its logistics and delivery times. Xi'an's aggressive marketing strategies, including extensive use of social media influencers and targeted advertising, further fueled its growth. Today, Xi'an is one of the largest online fashion retailers in the world, with a presence in over 220 countries. The company's mobile app has become one of the most downloaded shopping apps globally, even surpassing Amazon Shopping by almost 80 million downloads, particularly among Gen Z and millennial consumers. Xi'an's vast product range now includes not only women's fashion, but also men's clothing, children's apparel, accessories, and home goods. From its humble beginnings as a niche online retailer, Xi'an has grown into a fast fashion powerhouse through a combination of savvy marketing, technological innovation, and an agile supply chain. While its rise to prominence has been impressive, it's not been without controversies, particularly concerning intellectual property issues, labor practices, and environmental impact. These challenges continue to shape the public perception and future direction of the company. Chinese fast fashion firm Xi'an is facing new legal challenges to his business practices. Yeah, three designers filed a civil lawsuit in California accusing the company of repeatedly stealing designs from other artists. The lawsuit alleges that Xi'an creates as many as 6,000 new items per day, all based on stolen designs through a coordinated illegal operation. That's the lawsuit's language. The suit also claims that the practices violate the Racketeer Influenced and Corrupt Organizations Act, better known as RICO, a law enacted in the 1970s to help law enforcement prosecute organized crime. Intellectual property theft is a serious issue that plagues the fashion industry, and Xi'an has been at the center of numerous allegations. IP theft involves the unauthorized use of designs, trademarks, and other creative works, infringing on the rights of original creators. For Xi'an, accusations of such practices have been very widespread, and even until now, it's still ongoing. Several well-known brands and independent designers have accused Xi'an of copying their designs. For instance, in 2020, Dr. Martens, the iconic footwear brand, sued Xi'an for allegedly selling boots that closely mimicked their trademark designs. Similarly, in 2021, another famous fashion brand, Levi's, had also filed a lawsuit against Xi'an, claiming that the company had replicated the distinctive logo of their Levi's t-shirt, a signature element of the brand. These cases highlight a broader pattern of behavior where Xi'an allegedly capitalizes on the creativity of others without permission or compensation. For small designers and independent artists, this can be particularly devastating. Many have taken to social media to voice their frustrations, sharing side-by-side -side comparisons of their original designs and Xi'an's products, which, to be honest, looks strikingly similar. When large companies like Xi'an engage in such practices, it creates a chilling effect on creativity and innovation within the fashion industry. Independent designers who rely on their unique creations to stand out would definitely feel disincentivized to produce original work if they fear that it will just be copied and sold at a fraction of the price. One of the most eye-widening controversies happened in 2020 when Xi'an sold a necklace featuring a swastika. While the swastika is an ancient symbol of peace in several cultures, it is more widely recognized as a symbol of hatred due to its association with the Nazi regime during World War II. The product description failed to acknowledge this context, leading to accusations of insensitivity and ignorance. The backlash was swift and severe, forcing Xi'an to remove the necklace from its site and issue an apology. In another story, Xi'an faced criticism for selling Muslim prayer mats as decorative rugs. These mats, which hold religious significance and are used during prayers, were marketed as trendy home decor items, stripped of their cultural and spiritual meaning. This commodification of sacred objects for profit demonstrated a lack of respect for cultural traditions and offended many in the Muslim community.
Chinese fast fashion e-commerce giant Shein put roots down in Canada last year. This 170,000 square foot distribution center and office in Markham, Ontario, the target of protesters Saturday. Lawmakers in the U.S. are pushing the SEC to audit Shein over allegations it uses forced labor. Canada's North American trade agreements prohibit the import of anything made with forced labor, though nothing has been seized since it was enacted. Sheehan tells Global News it's committed to respecting human rights and adhering to local laws in each market it operates in. It says it has zero tolerance for forced labor and that it has no manufacturers in the Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region. Sheehan, the fast fashion giant, has captivated consumers worldwide with its trendy, affordable clothing. However, behind the glossy facade and low prices lies a darker reality that many consumers are unaware of. Allegations of forced labor, poor working conditions, and exploitation have plagued Xi'an's supply chain, raising serious ethical concerns about the true cost of cheap fashion. Forced labor is a pervasive issue in the global fashion industry. It involves workers being manipulated into employment through threats, violence, or other forms of pressure, violating fundamental human rights and international labor laws. The fashion industry, with its complex and opaque supply chains, is particularly susceptible to such practices, and Xi'an is no exception. If you want to know more about forced labor in our modern society, you can check out our video on the top right. Xi'an's rapid ascent in the fashion world is built on a business model that prioritizes speed and cost efficiency by producing clothing at breakneck speed and low costs. Xi'an can offer thousands of new styles daily. Xi'an uses algorithms to create new designs based on user clicks. When the app or website registers a high volume of purchases for a product, the algorithm automatically generates new designs based on the trendiness of the original. However, this model often comes at the expense of workers' rights and well-being, as it is necessary to manufacture quickly in order to keep up with trends, leading to severe labor practices. Investigative reports have highlighted significant issues within Xi'an's supply chain, revealing a troubling reality that contradicts the brand's glossy image. The human impact of these labor practices is quite disgusting, if you want me to put it into words. Workers, often from vulnerable populations, endure harsh conditions and receive very little wages. Their stories reveal the true cost of fast fashion. Not just Xi'an, but other famous fast fashion brands too. For instance, many workers report working long hours without breaks, facing constant pressure to increase production and having no voice or rights in the workplace. <laughs> These conditions not only violate basic labor laws, but also strip workers of their dignity and human rights. In 2021, an undercover investigation by Channel 4's Dispatches exposed alarming conditions in factories associated with Xi'an in Leicester, UK. Workers in these factories were found to be earning as little as three and a half pounds per hour, far below the legal minimum wage of about eight pounds 90 per hour in the country. They endured long hours in unsafe environments, lacking basic protections and rights. This investigation brought significant public scrutiny and highlighted the human cost of Xi'an's low prices. You can also find a link to the Xi'an documentary investigation on forced labor by Channel 4 in the video description. Be sure to check it out if you're interested. The situation is equally concerning in other parts of the world. In November 2022, U.S. Customs and Border Protection seized shipments from Xi'an under suspicion of forced labor. This action was taken under the We Girl Forced Labor Prevention Act, aimed at blocking imports of goods made with forced labor from the Xinjiang region of China. The Xinjiang region has been widely reported as a site of severe human rights abuses, including the use of forced labor among the Uyghur Muslim population. 
This seizure underscored the global reach and severe implications of forced labor practices within Xi'an's supply chain. The most alarming news of all of this is the hidden help me messages labeled on Xi'an's products that went viral on TikTok in 2022. Regular care instructions. But I did find some that have the need your help message. However, these help me messages were later debunked by many investigators. For example, a long handwritten note in Chinese that was found on a pair of pants sold in Belfast, Northern Ireland was from a 2014 BBC News story, and it is reported that the pair of pants was not from Xi'an. Similarly, a printed help me word was found on a packaging label that was from a Chinese clothing brand called Rumway. Again, not Xi'an. Another tag with a help me sign found by a woman in Michigan, United States, was also not from Xi'an, but rather from an underwear company in the Philippines. Many clothing brands such as Zara, H&M, and even Louis Vuitton have been accused of violating human rights. Although it's common for other major brands to face such accusations, it doesn't mean that Xi'an is not involved in any sort of forced labor or other human rights violations. This is reinforced by Xi'an's lack of transparency in not disclosing their supply chains and factory working conditions, despite selling products at a fraction of the price compared to its competitors. In 2022, the United States issued a ban on all Xi'an cotton products after Xi'an was accused of using forced labor by Uyghurs in Xinjiang, China. However, there wasn't sufficient solid evidence linking Xi'an's cotton products to the forced labor practices reported in Xinjiang. Xi'an has firmly denied these accusations, suggesting that the product ban is more of a geopolitical move aimed at undermining Xi'an's market influence in the fast fashion industry in the US. Social media also bears responsibility for perpetuating such controversies. Influencers or brand ambassadors often seek attention by creating viral content to gain more followers and likes. Whether it's spreading false news about forced labor practices or promoting fast fashion brands, they indirectly fuel the demand for cheap clothing brands that may be involved in human rights violations. I ask them questions like, what does your work week look like? How many hours do you work? What's your commute? Most of them work like eight to six and their commute is like 10 to 15 minutes, just like normal. Now, some of those influencers are facing criticism that they're amplifying the company's propaganda. The controversies surrounding not just Xi'an, but also other popular clothing brands like Temu and Nike underscore the urgent need for reform in the fast fashion industry. Forced labor and poor working conditions, these aren't just one-off issues. They are heartbreaking signs of a much bigger, deeply rooted systemic problem. As awareness increases, the hope is that companies like Xi'an will be compelled to adopt more responsible and humane practices, ensuring that the true cost of fashion isn't borne by the most vulnerable.